Today I've got a healthy interpretation, I should say my personal healthy interpretation, of a chili dish. Now I know that people have different interpretations of what chili is and some people are very strict about using the term. I don't care what you call it, I'm going to call it chili, let's just agree that it's delicious. And let me show you how to make it. This dish is full of vegetables. I actually based it off of a vegetarian chili recipe and I decided to add meat to it because I'm not a vegetarian but I decided to add turkey to this recipe but you could add vegetarian crumbles or you could add ground beef whatever you feel like adding so we start out first with some olive oil today I'm making this in the instant pot but if you check the description all of the ingredients all of the amounts are going to be in the description and that recipe will be a flexible recipe that you can use to make this in the instant pot or you can just make it in a pot on the stove so I'm going to start by adding some olive oil to my pot which has been set to saute and it's already hot and then I'm going to saute some garlic that I have chopped and sliced you want to get the garlic sauteed a little bit because you want to take the edge off of that sharp flavor that you often get with garlic now when the garlic's just got a little bit of color on it that's really when the odor changes and I know it's ready for me to add the next ingredient and the next ingredient here is some chopped onion of course the garlic will continue to saute just a little bit with the onion Okay, those onions are a little bit softened. I really just want them to be a little bit sauteed before I add the meat. So let's talk about the meat a little bit. Um, like I said, I'm using turkey for this recipe and you can use ground turkey that you find in the market. I found that one of the most convenient ways to use ground turkey is to use turkey burgers that are frozen and toss those turkey burgers uh, in your chili once you've thawed them. Okay, getting that meat out of the packages wasn't pretty, but we did it. All right, so now you want to brown this meat. Meat needs to be brown before we can go to the next step. Okay, now that the turkey's browned, I'm gonna add the next ingredients, and those ingredients are celery and some chopped up multicolored bell peppers. Now this is going to take up a considerable amount of the instant pot. What I want to do is get it mixed together a little bit. Okay. There are a couple things you can do if you're uh, if you've got the time. You can saute the celery together with the onions and soften those. I'm trying to do a quick version of this, so I didn't do that, and I actually think it's fine. So, now that I've got the veggies mixed in with the meat, I'm going to actually add a spice mix. This spice mix, you can find the exact composition and amounts in the description, but it's got cumin, it's got uh, chili powder, it's got salt, it's got pepper, onion, and garlic powders. In it goes. Oh, also oregano. Quite a bit of oregano. I mix that together, and then I'm going to add these beans. Now, I've got actually three cans of beans. I've got dark red kidney beans, I've got black beans and I've got some white beans there, white kidney beans. Um, some people like chickpeas instead of the white beans. These are the beans I like. You use the beans you like. Okay. I'll mix that together because what we're going to do next If 
you have fresh jalapeno peppers, I would chop up two or three of those without the seeds and put them in here. If you can't find fresh jalapeno peppers or if you just like a chipotle flavor better, get yourself a can of chipotle peppers in adobo sauce, take them out of the can, slice them up, chop them up, and uh, depending on the heat level that you want in your chili, add uh, some fraction of this can. I'm actually going to add the entire can. We have some people in our house that really like these peppers. Mix that together. And then finally, two cans of crushed tomatoes. These will be the liquid for this recipe because I'm not adding any water. There's one. And there's two. Okay. Now that should be enough moisture for this to pressure cook. But if you didn't want to pressure cook it, you could slow cook it at this point for, I would let this go for a couple of hours at least. But I'm going to pressure, I'm going to pressure cook it. Okay, I've set that to pressure cook. And we'll check in with it when the time is up. Well, I have an interesting result to report. Um, I've gotten a burn message on this Instant Pot three times now. I've let it uh, try to come up to temperature so that it would come up to pressure. And each time it started to come up to pressure, the burn message came on, I needed to open it up and stir the chili. So cooking this at pressure was not a success. Some people would consider this a terrible failure. However, in the time that I've been going through this process of stirring and re-stirring the chili, it's cooked itself. Um, so essentially, instead of cooking itself at pressure, it's cooked itself similarly to if I had cooked it on the stove. Um, except, of course, on the stove, this would have splattered all over the place because you can see how full the Instant Pot is right now. So, um, so I learned something and I'm gonna pass that along to you. If you're going to make this at pressure in the Instant Pot, what I suggest you do is instead of using crushed tomatoes, you use two large cans of diced tomatoes. What's the difference? With the crushed tomatoes, I stirred it in so the entire chili became very thick. And this is what triggered the burn message. When there's a thick substance on the bottom of the Instant Pot, it's gonna heat up too quickly and you're gonna get the burn message and uh, that causes it to stop cooking and then you have to start all over again. If you use cans of diced tomatoes instead, here's what I suggest you do. Just before you cover the Instant Pot to try to bring it up to pressure, pour your tomatoes, your diced tomatoes, on top of your mixture. The liquid from the diced tomatoes will sink to the bottom where it'll form a, a thin kind of bottom layer and the actual tomatoes, because they're diced, will stay on the top. This will allow you to cook it at pressure in the Instant Pot. Or, if you'd rather have chili like this, using the uh, crushed tomatoes, just make it on the stove or make it according to the directions that you'll see below for a slow cooker version. Right now, this chili is perfect. It's got, it's full of vegetables. It's got some beans in it. It's very hearty. And if you like a slightly spicy chili, you're gonna love this. And I would suggest you uh, adjust the spiciness to your liking. And also at this point, I would suggest you adjust the salt and pepper to your liking as well. Thanks for watching this video. I'm JP for You Can Cook Anything. And stay tuned for more videos like this one from myself and from my cousin Bob. Remember what Bob and I always say. Thank you.